Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a project on my 2IS. It's been a long while since I've done a project on a 2IS. So today I picked up some Super Pro bushings for the lower control arms. You guys probably know these as the FIGS bushings that they sell as in a whole assembly or just the bushing itself that you got to press in. So today I've just got the bushings that you have to press in and I'll show you guys how to go through all the steps to press the old one out and press the new one in and install it on the car. So stay tuned. So over here we've got the Super Pro bushings and everything. So they come as four separate pieces. And I think because I got these 90K durometer ones, they're a little bit different than the ones I've seen other people get. So I noticed that my little bushings right here or the sleeves are actually separated from the actual bushing. All the other ones I've seen other people buy, they're already pressed in here. So I'm not sure why these particular ones or this batch came like this. So what we got here is we got the bushing and like I said, these are the 90K durometer ones. They're a little bit stiffer than the standard ones. I believe the standard ones are like 80 or 70. I'm not sure, but I'll post it right on the screen here. But anyway, so now actually I have to press this thing into here because I measured this earlier and this thing is like a couple millimeters, maybe like two millimeters bigger than that hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to press this into here before I put it into the actual mount itself on the car. So as for the part number on here, as you can see, it's SPF3491. Without the Dash 90K, it's the standard version. You could actually see on the actual bushing itself, they actually have it printed right there in the bushing so you know if you ever mix these up. On the back side, it has a 73, which I'm not sure what the 73 stands for. It might be the batch or, or whatnot, but yeah, one side has 73 on my version, and then the other side has the part number. And inside, you can see it's got that ribbed edge in there, and that's where the grease that you have to grease up kind of sits, and that way it doesn't dry up inside those pins right there. So these Super Pro brushings have been around for a really long time. I mean, I've been reading about them and hearing about them for over... 13 or 14 years. I believe these things used to be like $120 just for these bushings themselves. But over the years, the price has gone up as the popularity has gone up. Uh, you could get these now for $200, just these bushings. That's a lot cheaper than actually buying the whole thing with it all pressed in already. They have that nice gun metal and it's all engraved and everything looks really cool. I'd rather go this route, buy these things for $200 or less I uh, use my new press that I bought a while back, which already is paid for by just buying these versions and doing it. And it also gives you the satisfaction of doing this stuff yourself. Uh, you do need all the tools and the press things and everything to get it out. But at the end of the day, you could buy all those tools. You'll end up having those tools for other projects and you could get these pressed in yourself. But most definitely, if you don't have all the tools or the know-how like I do to do all this stuff yourself, Buying the fully complete versions that are essentially bolt-on is gonna make your life much easier. As you guys can see from the channel, I like to teach everybody how to do this stuff, so things like this interest me, and they're a lot more fun for me to do these projects versus just buying it and bolting it on. I'm over here with the press, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go, go ahead and try to press it down and press it into the hole and force it through and see if it goes. Before we do that, we wanna put the installation grease on the inside of here just to grease up this thing so it slides in easier. Plus it'll fill in those ridges inside there and actually provide a little bit of lubrication inside this thing when it's actually permanently in there. So what you're gonna do is just open this baby up, just put some and then just fill the inside of this thing up with grease. Just make sure you put a bunch of grease in there. The more grease, the better, because it's gonna get into those little grooves and that little cross hatch that they have inside of here. All right, so now that we got lubed up, just put this off to the side. We'll try to press it in. All right, so we got everything set up. You wanna get the pin as centered as you can into the bushing, and then wanna center that also to the actual piston of the press. Uh, this is my trusty Harbor Freight press that I bought a while back. I'm trying to make the most use out of it as I can. So we're gonna go ahead and just push it down. I've got this little disc right here. There's a little seal press disc that I bought. It's a whole kit that I bought on Amazon. I figured I'd use it for pressing these type of projects. And then once you start getting some pressure, you can kind of see the press working. So it's getting out of center. So I gotta re 
recenter this thing. So I got it realigned again. It's really hard just because of this thing is kind of wobbly to try to get it perfectly centered and not offset. So you just want to try to get it into the hole and then just see it trying to slip in. All right, slowly. All right, there. All right, perfect, got it in. You could do this with a vise too. It might be easier, but since I have this press, I wanted to use it, but it's in and we just press it down flush. All right, we got everything pressed nicely flush into there. We got this excess grease here. Just go ahead and just put it into the hole so we can actually use it when we're installing it, but we should be good to go here. I'll go ahead and press the other one in off camera and this thing's ready to go into those little mounts and arms onto the car. All right, so we're underneath the car now and these are the bushings and the bushing holders that we're gonna be replacing here. So what you wanna do first is mark your side. So I put RR here, which is the rear right. And over here, I put RL, which is the rear left. So that way, when I press the old one out and I press the new one in, that I have the orientation correct because it has to go one direction, as we showed earlier when we were pressing that thing into there, the collar goes in one direction. You'll notice on my car, I've got a little bit of corrosion here. It looks like battery acid from my old battery, the one that was just a regular battery leaked down this frame right here and got onto these nuts and everything and it corroded it a little bit. I'll go ahead and just clean all that up when I have this thing down and I'll probably end up coating this or replacing this bolt right here. It's like a dollar bolt right here. So that one's corroded right now, lost all its zinc coating or whatever coating it got. And then this piece right here, I might just do a little bit of touch up paint or maybe powder coat that. In order to remove this thing, you basically have to take off this 22 right here. There's another 22 over here on these two spots and it drops that whole thing down, but it doesn't drop down that easily. You still have to take apart this bracket right here, which is some 14s. And then once you have all that loose, you actually have to have pry this arm down uh, against the subframe here to get it to clear the little lip. But to do that, you must unbolt the shock from its control arm right here so you can actually have that free. Once you unbolt this guy, you'll be able to move this thing about a half inch or so to slide this baby out. You wanna remove this plastic right now too while you're under here just to give you a little bit more clearance and room back here to right, work. We'll go ahead and take these apart. So you got a 22 here and a 17 over here. And this thing has a bolt on top too. All right, so now we got all that free dust all over the floor. So this thing is pretty much loose now, but you still have to unbolt the shock just to get it to wedge down. So we'll go ahead and shoot this bolt off. It's a 17 on the back side to hold the, the head of the bolt. And then this one's a 19 back here, so we'll just shoot that off. Right out, I'm gonna get my pry bar. Well, I'm gonna have to shoot this 22 out of here too. All right, so I got the big pry bar here. So easiest way is to wedge it outward away from the car because then that way you have, you kind of clear this spot. So you just, right there, perfect, easy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this side while I'm down here, do it all at once. This side I'm gonna time lapse because you guys already saw I did it on that side. So we'll just go ahead and just shoot this real quick. So we got it over here on our press now, and this thing fits perfectly in between this 12 ton press from Harbor Freight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it there. And then I'm gonna use a new cup that I bought that fits on here. I bought a whole set of 
seal presses that go all the way up to this size and bigger. I got this set right here and you can see it's huge as far as the sizes go, but it's got everything I need to press everything out and it's got both sides so you can press one way or the other. And it's actually for uh, manually pressing out seals because you put one side uh, to catch it and then the other side to press it through using these threaded rods right here. But we're gonna end up just using our press, which makes it easier. So to get this thing pressed through, I actually have to double stack it because I'm like right in between the heights. So what we're using here is a 76 millimeter. That's the diameter. And I think that's just enough to get it in between here. We wanna keep a box or something underneath so whenever it drops out, it doesn't damage your floors or hit you in the foot. So you just wanna get it centered and just slowly go down. Make sure you get it pressed and you're gonna start feeling the forces on it. This thing's a very slow process just because it's a manual, but. All right, we're past the lip now. There we have it right there. We got pressed everything out. Uh, you probably want to clean the inside of this, of the burrs. Clean it with a wire brush before we go ahead and press the new one in. And here's what the insert that came out looks like right there. So we just toss this baby. The other side's not pressing out as easy and as straight as the first one. So I'm just having a little bit of trouble trying to get the pressure on it. So this side finally came out. I did puncture it a little bit with that press and it started leaking a little bit of oil out because this thing is fluid filled. All right, I use a little bit of steel wool right here to clean up the burrs inside of there and also cleaned up the rest of this thing to make it a little bit shinier, get rid of all the old tarnish and oxidation. I'm just gonna polish it up with this little polishing thing with the drill and then go press it back together. All right, so I polished it up a little bit with this drill over here and got it a little bit more respectable a little bit more shine to it. it was still, it's gonna be under the car, so we should be good. It'll look uh, somewhat decent once we put it all back together. All right, so we'll get it back on here just the way we pressed it out. These things come with a nice chafer on here, and then the actual mount has a chafer too, so they kind of made up, and they nest very well to each other. So you just wanna center it in there so it slips in. I had to get the biggest one, which is an 82, and it fits kind of over it, I don't want it to fit too far over where it slips into this thing, but it's big enough where it clears the rubber on here and it touches the metal good enough to press down. So we'll go ahead and just start with this. We got it centered, kind of ready to go. Go ahead and start, start pressing this in. Just want to make sure everything goes in nice and centered and smoothly. So you can kind of feel it finding itself into the hole. It's not all the way down yet. I just want to put the spacer on here so I get a little bit more force into here. Right there, it's nice and flush. We'll go ahead and release this thing. We got it all pressed in there nicely. All right, look at that. We got a nice, perfect press. Everything's nice and even, went in smoothly and straight. Looks just like an early version of the figs before they made it all pretty looking with the new gray extrusion that they have now. So we'll go ahead and do the other one time lapse and get this thing back in the car. And the first thing we want to do before we get everything back together, we want to use the installation grease and just grease the whole thing where the new bushing is going to go on. So you just wanna just get it all around the little piston here. Just get it on there, lube up the thread. We're done with this. We're gonna have to pry it back down, stick the new bushing back on, and just pry it in there and squeeze it in there. Okay, so make sure you grab the right one, the one you marked. So this is the left front side and rear side. So I got the RL right here. I'm gonna slide this thing on. We know we have a lot to clear to get it through. 
pry it out. Perfect. You probably want to reattach your shock before you get back here and reattach all this just because you want to get everything back lined up correctly. One thing I noticed while I was in here, looks like my eBay shocks from like three or four years ago, it's been maybe four years now, have finally deteriorated on the lower bushing here. I'm gonna have to go ahead and take that out and probably replace it with a new bushing or just a new actual shock. But uh, yeah, that thing lasted a lot longer than I thought. All right, to get this shock back in, you wanna just kinda press up on the wheel, kinda get lined up and get it pressed through. All right, got it all the way through. So for this particular one, you wanna go ahead, the rear nut here is a locking nut. So you just wanna get it in there and then tighten from the front side, which is the head of the bolt. And with this thing, you wanna also load the suspension before you tighten this thing down, just because, well, it probably doesn't matter anymore because that bushing's done. But that's one of the reasons why you always wanna load your suspension when you tighten those bushings down so they don't get torn up like that. So I put this nut and washer back on in the back here. Hand thread them all in. Don't ever wanna shoot and strip any of these things. Same with this bolt right here, get some lube on it. This one has the bolt and the nut on top. So once we hand tighten down these things, and then just tighten them with a the ratchet, we wanna go get the torque specs on them and I'll post the torque specs up once I get them. So we got all the torque specs that we're gonna need down here. So this baby right here, the big one to the subframe is 151 foot pounds. This one is 83 foot pounds. I think this one's 63 foot pounds. And these right here are only like 37 foot pounds or something. And that strut one back there is gonna be 116. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this project on the 2IS. This has been a long overdue upgrade for my 2IS ever since I learned about this maybe like 10 years ago. I've just been holding it off and off and off until I finally got the tools and it got everything I needed to put it in now. It makes it so much easier and I saved like $200 by having my own press. As you can see, pressing the old bushing out and the new one in is so much easier using this Harbor Freight 12 ton press and then using all those seal adapters I bought. Those things are pretty cheap. I think they were like 50 or $60 for that whole set and I'm gonna end up using those a lot more on my other projects and other things I do around here. But overall, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet to the channel to stay on top of all my different DIY projects, whether it's on the IS250, the IS300, the Sienna, or whatever I'm doing around the garage, go ahead and subscribe to your channel. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.